all that ridicule you took, every bit of the ridicule you took after getting your butt beat, when you pound on their butt tonight, you think about that. You take every bit of your energy, every fiber in your bone, and you take it and you beat the piss out of them. I'm talking about beat the piss out of them. Let's go whip their ass. Let's go. All that ridicule you took, every bit of the ridicule you took after getting your butt beat, when you pound on their butt tonight, you think about that. You take every bit of your energy, every fiber in your bone, and you take it and you beat the piss out of them. I'm talking about beat the piss out of them. Let's go whip their ass. Let's go. and gentlemen i'm your host blake rafino this is are you serious sports we hope that you're making a good one we know that we are as well huge show in store for you tonight pooh bear just us just me and producer pooh bear not guesting all we're doing all night long is talking about lsu we'll talk a little bit of purdue their head coach jeff Brom's going to louisville going back home What does that mean for LSU? Well, look around uh, uh, Purdue. I went back and watched some film. Went back and watched um, Purdue versus Michigan yesterday and today. And so we're going to make a decision uh, and start breaking that game down a little bit uh, as well. So (laughs) LSU got some pieces returning. Maybe not all announced. Jay Ward, and but we'll get to some of those. Jay Ward announced that he will be going uh, to the NFL draft. He'll be entering his name in the NFL draft. But our good buddy Jay Ward, shout out to him, uh, is going to be playing in the bowl game. So big shout out to Jay Ward uh, for doing that when he did not have to. When all intents and purposes, most individuals that entered their name into the NFL draft, sit out and elect not to play in the bowl game. Jay Ward is going to elect to play in it. So we'll see. Good for him. Good for him. Radarius Jones enters the portal today. Radarius Jones, a.k.a. Radar Jones, was suspended all 2022 season for academic reasons. He's entered his name into the portal. So you're getting a little bit thin out there, DB. You're honestly, honestly, you're gaining a little bit thin out there in DB for guys that could be on this team in 2023. We'll talk about that because the staff hits the road and recruit. And when I tell you all show tonight is nothing but LSU talk, whatever you want to talk about, we're going to touch on it. You're damn skippy. Football, baseball, basketball, LSU, we can we can talk about LSU chess for all I care about because tonight it's all about the Tigers. 
but I will make one exception. I do want to get to one thing, probably maybe middle to end of the show. College football is shaking up a little bit now that everybody's making these decisions. But one big thing came out today that we'll touch on. It looks like the expansion of these conferences are coming to a halt, uh, and everybody's going to come to probably a 14 to 16 team conference, making it a big, making it a big five, but possibly even a big four. So we'll we'll talk about that. And we missed this last night because we had so much that we had to talk about. Uh, hashtag Ask Blake. So you have questions, thoughts, concerns. Anything you want to talk about, put it inside the chat. We'll get to as much of it as we can. So it's going to be a fun night. Got my AYS mug right here. You can go to the website, you know, subscribe to the forum, and go get you a nice little AYS mug. Mm. Mm, so good. So good. I don't think you're supposed to drink whiskey out of that, but so good. So good. <laughs> all right, we'll get to all of it. All right, let's get to a couple questions, though, before we get started. Lee on Facebook says, Ask Blake, do you see J.D. Daniels staying, and do you think we will try to get a top QB coming out of the portal? Uh, I believe, let me say this. So there's a lot of opinions uh, about what Jaden Daniels should do. Majority of them, in my opinion, are wrong in reference to giving him the best guidance on what he should do. Some people that are telling him to hit the NFL draft are people that want to see other quarterbacks. Not necessarily, like, if you really, 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 really think about it, like, if you really, 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 really think about it, there he should come back. So, for his own benefit, for his own benefit, like, so, you know, come on. If I'm Brian Kelly, I'd tell him to come back. That's just me. Stephen Fry, our good buddy over at Fry Construction. Let's bring this up right quick. Uh, site work and land development, oil and gas services, commercial construction, aggregate, and soil hauling, waste containers, demolition, they do it all. 161 West Maple Street in Eunice, Louisiana. And give them a call today at 337-457-5100. That's 337-457-5100. Let them know that Blake Rafino sent you on by. But Stefan says, let's get this party started, y'all. That's right. Let's get this party started. Dwayne Official says, ask Blake, do you BK signs, do you think, I'm, I'm assuming he's, saying, he's trying to say, do you think BK signs Dominic Lovett from Missouri? He has LSU in his top three. Well, D Dwayne, what I would tell you is, is that you should go to AYSSnetwork.com and sign up for the forum. And to, to, you know, I dropped something on that the other day. I dropped something on that the other day. It's uh, it's all right there. All you got to do is seven bucks a month. Um, So I, I will wait a little bit longer on that one, but we talk about that one at great length. Ryan Gidry says, Zach went and got his, his nails done. Probably. 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 Uh, Dane Bergeron says, let's go, Blake. Preston had Brandon Taylor on his show last night. Great show. You were mentioned. Brandon Taylor's my guy, man. That's my dude. That's my dude. We uh, grew up in Franktown together. Uh, if you don't know where that is, Franklinton, Louisiana, played high. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I've known Brandon since I was five years old. <laughs> Went almost was in every class with him, and played on pretty much every single sporting team with him my entire life until I go to Southeastern, and he obviously goes to LSU. So I mean, I, I'm literally inseparable at times. I mean. There were our Brandon, Brandon, in my senior year of high school, we went to lunch together every single day. Every single day. Three, like when I, I don't think you understand what I just said. When I mean every single day, I'm talking about every single day, 365 times. When you, when you sit down and you eat lunch with somebody for 365 days out of, you know, 365 straight days, you get to know somebody. <laughs> <laughs> um Pooh Bear says he took you to get your first fade. That's actually true. That's actually a true statement. I went to Sibs Barbershop, and let me tell you what happened. I so Pooh, I, I don't mean this in any way, and you know this. 
I went to, I had my first black barbershop experience, got faded up, and Big Sib, shout out to our good buddy Sib, put that alcohol in the back of my neck. My white Italian ass was hollering. Do you hear me? Hoo, hoo. <laughs> the whole barbershop, it was 9.30 at night. Everybody was laughing. <laughs> Bro, faded up. They called me Stequavius Rafino is what they called me. Stequavius. Anyway. Anyway, yep, got faded up. Dude, uh, our, our friend Sib. What's up, Sib, if you're listening? Brandon Reese says, ask Blake, I'm guessing BK will add a couple of O linemen, D linemen. Uh, well, you just pretty much named the whole the whole damn team. Uh, <laughs> look, I mean, we'll get into all this tonight. Fire in your questions. This is going to be a, a, a very fan-friendly show, if that makes sense. So I'm going to get to as many of these comments as I can. We hadn't done that in a while. Where I just sit here and we pretty much answer all your questions, you know. It, you know, you, that's how I came up and doing this podcast. We're going to do that tonight. We're just going to do that tonight. So, um, we'll 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 touch on that a little in just a little bit because that's a, that's a big part of our show. Tyler Man says, if Daniels stays next year, does Nuss transfer? Well, you know, if Nuss was going to transfer with all the quarterbacks that are in there, if, if he's going to do that, he's got to get moving. You know, like, I mean, you got, what, 42 more days? So, I mean, could he play the bowl game and then enter the portal? Yes, but the problem with that is, is in this new little structure, you only have 45 days to get in and, and, and start going somewhere. If I, That's the way that I read it. That's the way that I read it. If I'm wrong, tell me. If I'm wrong, tell me. So... You know, if he's going to play the bowl game, you know, he needs to get moving. Reed Parent says, B L B L A. That's what he says. Penn Jones says, Love it is friends with Wingo. So I hope that helps us to get him. Yeah. And Steeples coached in that area. So we'll see. We'll see. Edward O says, Oh, dang, you can't wait till after spring. I mean, you can technically. I mean, it's going to reopen, but Edo, I don't, you know, it's of my opinion that they're going to have to make a decision. Um, They're going to have to make a decision here soon. Dane says, you need to convince Brandon to get into coaching football, needs him, the kids need him. I don't know if he wants to do that. You know, I mean, guys, it's tough to coach. I mean, a lot of you have children. You, you wouldn't want to coach. You wouldn't want to coach. Jeremy Hyde says, do you think we should go out and try and recruit another running back like Trey Sanders? No, I don't. And thank you for the super chat. No, I don't. If he's gonna, if you're going to recruit a running back, he's not the one that you need to go get. And do you believe we should move on from Brian Polian? So we do need to get to this break and I'll start firing, you know, answering all your questions, but I just don't think they're going to move on from him. I just don't. I don't think that Brian Kelly is going to move on from um, Brian Polian. I, I just, I, I really just don't see it, guys. I mean, you know, because look, there's going to be so many kids that hit the portal too. Like, you know, everybody was talking about Drake May hitting the portal. Well, he announced just now that he's staying at North Carolina. And then you got Dylan Johnson, the really good running back out of Mississippi State who just hit the portal. I'm here and there. Might, they might have another, you know, position player that hits the portal here in the next couple of days. Um, so, I mean, I think LSU is going to be picky. And when I, when I, the reason I say that on a Napoleon thing is, a lot of these guys that you're going to get in the portal probably aren't going to necessarily all start. So a lot of them are going to have to play special teams. So maybe, um, uh, you know, we'll see. Simper says, no, Blake, you're not wrong. That's blasphemy. I don't know what he's talking about. Simper always get mad when somebody says something about Nussmeyer. But it's true. I didn't say, but see, guys, I don't, some of y'all, I don't get where y'all, where y'all see that I'm like dogging somebody. Pooh, did I just dog Garrett Nussmeyer? Okay. 
Because I sure as hell didn't think that I did. I just said if he's going to transfer, he's got to go. Was the question that was asked? Good Lord. I would love to get some of y'all on here. You know, you I I, I wanted to do this one time. I, I, I want I want people to come on the show and like show their face. But what would you think if I if I started sending links out to some of these people on the you know in the chat and start bringing them up? They they be <laughs> anyway. All right, a couple more, then we'll get rolling. Tyler Mann says, what do you think is our biggest need in the portal? Interior, interior defensive lineman. Interior defensive lineman is the number one need for LSU right now. I mean, look how you got beaten the last two weeks. It, 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 DBs and interior defensive lineman is your number one need. It's not it, – guys, this – and Tyler, I don't mean this in a wrong way. We can have this – like, we can have this debate or debate, and people can want to have this debate with me all they want to, there is no debate on this. Like, zero, zilch, nada. They need interior defensive linemen and DBs. If anybody else wants to argue that, they're flat out wrong. The last two weeks, you did not have anybody that could rotate in for Jaqueline Roy and Makai Wingo that was ready enough to play, and you got beat. Do you have guys like Ty G. Hill? Yes. Is he ready? Do you have Mason Smith returning? Yes. But Georgia had nine defensive linemen that they rotated in and out. You got to get closer to that. You got to get closer to that. You can't play this pity pat game of thinking two guys are going to save your ass. And then you know what happened at DB. Stetson Bennett ripped you alive. (laughs) Pressure. Pressure. Lamar Williams says, I should have hosted him when he w- when you was gone. Pressure, you <sighs> pressure, your ass is always like in Starkville and some shit. You always like traveling. Every time Pooh says, Hey, y'all tried this place, I'm like, yeah, I've been there like six or seven times. Your ass is always working talking about you gonna do host one for me. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Anyway, Dylan, thank you for the stars. Uh Thank you for you uh, for the stars. Samer says, "Untrue, Blake. I don't give a damn about Nuss. I'm all in on Walker. Well, then what did I say? Like Samer, what did I remotely say? Tell me, buddy. All right, let's get this thing rolling. Everybody, do us a favor by hitting the like and share. So many of you are listening to us live right now on Facebook. Stop, hit the like and share. Share to your own social media pages. Share to those Facebook groups as well. If you're listening to us on YouTube, like, subscribe, notification bell." We greatly appreciate y'all doing that. To XM Radio and tune in. Thank you for the partnership that you've given us. But if you're listening to us live right now on XM or in on the TuneIn app, thank you so much in the Believe Sports Radio and everywhere you listen to podcasts. Rate and review, subscribe. We have hit a new total, 150 new subscribers on the AYSSnetwork.com message board. Massive, man. Massive. Y'all keep going, subscribing. It's been, it's been, you know, lighting up. It's been lighting up. All right, let's get this thing rolling. Let's talk about our good friends over at BetOnline.ag, our good friends over at GM Bardo and Sons. Guys, we return in one minute. Got a lot to talk about LSU. Fire in your questions right now. Let's discuss all of it. Maybe I'll give you some breaking news. Who knows? With over 65 years of experience, nobody is better equipped to service in your vehicle than GM Bardo and Sons. RV repair, big rig overhauls, motor chassis, routine maintenance, tire rotations, tire sales. No job is too big or too small over at GM. If you break down the side of the road in the greater Baton Rouge area, they will come and get you. And the best thing about that is that they can come and get you, and then they can bring your vehicle back to their shop and start the repairs right then. Again, GM Varno and Sons, go see them over at 2500 Fuller Boulevard. Give them a call at 225-664-9992. 225-664-9992. Tell them your good friend, Blake Rafino. Sit you on by. No GM, I'm no bet online. Was it just GM Poo? Uh, bet online is the fastest and easiest way for you to wager on all of your favorite sports, contests, events with the first to market odds and lines. Find reviews for all the news for each league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, college sports, esports, and even golf. 
Bet Online continues to be the top online resource for all of your sports information for live in game betting props and futures. Head on over to Bet Online today and use your mobile device to join and make your first sports bet. Use our promo code BELIEVE50. That's BELIEVE50, B L E A V 50 to receive your 50% off welcome bonus on your first deposit. That's betonline.ag. Betonline.ag. Why does my family always call me when I'm doing a show? You know, like my sister FaceTiming me right now. Carrie, I'm doing a show. Seven o'clock central time every single night. (laughs) Because it's every night. You should be knowing what I'm doing. Call you after the show. Call you after the show. Love you. Bye. Be safe. All right. They, my family never wants to talk to me unless I'm on uh, doing a show. None of them. None of them. All right, everybody hit the like and share. Simba says, son of a, son of a what? He says, you said, uh, if I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong. I was agreeing with you. I, 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 yeah, I'm so lost there. I'm so lost. Kenny says, what's the linebacker room like outside of Harold Perkins? Well, that's a big question. We can, we can start with that one. Look, I, I think that that. You know, you have Greg Penn uh, Jr. returning. You do have Harold Perkins. Do you work Harold Perkins in the inside? I don't think they're going to move Harold Perkins. I think they're going to do a lot of the same things that they were doing with him a season ago and or this season. That's not even a season ago. This season, I mean, Wes Weeks is there. You know, Demario Tolan's an interesting young man. Guys, you know, uh, Brian Kelly really raved over Demario Tolan, right? Really raved over the Florida linebacker at LSU. He got a lot of playing time this year, but you do need a little bit more depth. So, do you you, you got some guys that play linebacker that's are that are freshmen? But I don't know if you have that guy that can come in and play right now. You got Kobe Fields. So if there if there's a linebacker that hits the portal, I think you need to go get him. Now you got uh, Whit Weeks, who's another young man, blazing speed. But I think he's like 215 pounds. If you're going to play in the inside, like, guys, listen, I I think it was Cole Kubelik that shared this on Twitter. Like, I I know that Harold Perkins is an All-American. Like, let's not get that twisted. Okay? Let's not get that twisted. However, however, they ran the – Georgia and A&M ran ran the ball right at Harold Perkins. Go pop in the film. I mean, that's not – you think I'm joking. It's legitimately what they did. So why isn't he in the game? Well, go watch it. Go watch it. And the, the problem is, is a lot of people say, well, why ain't he on the field? Why ain't he on the field? And, and I'm sitting here asking myself the question, like, well, if you would have gone back and watched the game and broke down the film, you would have saw that they ran right at him. So, I, I mean... They got to get better there. They got to get better there. Ronnie Jones says that's the attitude of people today. All mouth just want to start crap. Yeah. Yeah, Ronnie, I guess. I mean, I I guess. Fire in your questions as well. Got a question. Let's fire it in here. Daniel says Tolan. uh, Tolan, yeah. Tolan, I mean, he's going to have to. He's going to have to be there. All right. So I want to do this. Let's break down a little bit of Purdue here. So speaking of watching film, right? Speaking of, let me get my phone. Speaking of watching film here too. So I went back and watched last night and again today uh, a, a Purdue's film. Now, if you miss it, their head coach, Jeff Brom, is gonna, it was expected and has been announced that he's going to be the new head coach at Louisville. I mean, listen, it's a really, really, really tough spot. A really, really, really tough spot when you get to a place where your head coach is leaving for another team, he's not being fired, and you're playing a bowl game. You should know, to some of the extent of your head coach leaving, you just went through it a season ago. So I don't think that you can just, you know, let your hair down and not focus. I mean, now go out there and have fun and play the game, but you got to be ready to go. Um, and, and, and Purdue has some guys, they're not, I mean, a lot of it really, I mean, they're kind of in a sense, 
I mean, a lot of their season went a, a lot like LSU's did. Team that wasn't going to make the playoff, wins their division, plays a top tier opponent in the in their championship game. You know, kind of trade some punches back and forth a little bit, but you could tell what the better team was. And Georgia and Michigan advanced, and LSU and Purdue are playing one another. But LSU is better than Purdue, <laughs> vastly better than Purdue. So I don't want you to think that you could just waltz into this game and not be prepared and not be focused and think that it, you're just going to go in here and win. But at the same time, there's a lot of distractions around Purdue. A lot of distractions. With that being said, though, my, my question would be, my question would be is this. You know, we're not 100% sure guys that are or are not going to be available for the Tigers. You know, B.J. Ojolari sent out a kind of a cryptic tweet today. And I got to tell you, <laughs> I, I, look, I don't want to make an assumption. I don't want to make an assumption, right? Like, I, I, I just can't do it because BJ is going to go in the first or second round, okay? Like, I got told by a front office guy who they said that BJ right now is an early second round pick. So, if, if that's the case, if he tests well and he does interviews well, guys, he's going to be a, a really, you know, a higher draft pick. So I don't know who's all going to be available, but but really and truthfully, Purdue's a good team, but without Jeff Brom and that coaching staff, I don't think they'll be a really good team. I mean, Brom's going back to Louisville, which is his alma mater. And so you got like, uh, what's the kid's name? O'Donnell, the quarterback. Now, look, they can sling it around a little bit. Like, let's not get this twisted. Like, they're not a bad team. Right, you're not playing a bad team. You're playing a team without a head coach that's got some pieces. Man, they can throw it all over the place. And I think you just got to be cautious. I mean, the, the running game's not that good. I mean, they they have some playmakers on the outside, but they you know they're just kind of like they're just good. You know what I mean? Like they're not. There's nothing great that they do. There's nothing great that they do. Like, I didn't pop on the film and be like, oh, God, who's that kid? You know, like, like, who's that kid? So, I'm not really impressed. I'll just be really honest. I'm not really impressed by Purdue. <laughs> I'm not, like, I'm not, I, I'm not per impressed at all. So, bottom line, be told, if you get in a situation where you got start getting a lot of opt-outs, and look, we can open up a whole can of worms here, but I, I'm not of the opinion anymore like bowl, that bowl games matter. I mean, do you, anytime the LSU goes out onto a, a, a field, whether it be baseball or a court and basketball or the football field, I want them to blow the doors off of any opponent that they play. It, it, this game against Purdue is a glorified scrimmage. It's it's for fans that say, "Oh, we got to ten wins." What does it really mean? Now, does it maybe does it help you in recruiting a little bit? Yeah, but the early not early signing day is going to be before you even get the chance for the tenth win. So so like, what does it even matter? <laughs> I mean. Like, it, it, it kind of does. It. It's a glorified scrimmage. You're not in a situation where you're not in a situation where you're in dire need like you were a year ago. Because LSU really needed Garrett Nussmeyer to go out there and play last year, and he didn't. Okay? You're not in that position this year. You can roll out there, and if you are focused and locked in, and you do what you do, and you don't make stupid mistakes. You don't make stupid turnovers. You don't do anything silly. You're not going over there, you know, with your dick in your hand, Pauls. But you're not going there, you know, what, what do you want to slap dicking around? You're not pussyfooting around. You should blow the doors off them bitches. I, I, I mean, I, uh, let me say this. Of the Power 5 teams that I've watched... This year that LSU is going to play, 
And you're gonna say you're gonna say, well, Blake, how is this even possible? Because A and M was five and seven. A and M still has dudes. Okay, like A and M's defensive front, they still got some like. It, it, let me just say this: A and M has more defensive or, or more guys that will go into the NFL and highly drafted into the NFL than what Purdue has. They just don't have the dudes. You get what I mean? Like they don't have a 6'5", 300-pound defensive tackle that can come up the middle and swim move Anthony Bradford and go and, and track down Daniels or Nussmeyer or Howard. Like, that's not going to happen. Now, they got some good pieces. They're just not great. They don't have a guy like Harold Perkins is going to run around all over the place. They don't. They don't have the receiving. You legitimately beat them probably in every category at the current moment besides corner. It's just the truth. It's just the truth. So, I'm not going to say who this DM's from, but a former LSU coach says, Blake, I'm watching the show. Literally, Pooh, I'll, I'll send you this. So I don't, we're not going to put it up. But a former LSU coach just sent me this. says, watching your show, and you said that it's a glorified scrimmage. It helps it, it, it helps continue to build the winning culture that BK is trying to establish. I, I, I agree with that. Now, I agree with that. It does help with us. It does help with culture. But what I mean, what I mean by that, it, like, you're right. He's right. Like, it, you know, he's right in the sense of, it does help get build the culture and momentum and things like that. You're not, he's not wrong, but in reference to everybody hitting my DMS, like, Oh no, Jay Ward's not playing in the bowl game. The season is not over yet. Even though he's playing in the bowl game, it's, it's like, so like, as an example, as an example, Jane Daniels went out there in a, in the SEC championship game with a bad ankle, had no business playing, and he went out there to go and try to win a championship. He's not going to do that again. You know, if he's that hard again and it doesn't get better and in enough time, they're not going to run him out there. Like I'm not, you know, it, it feels that way to me. It, I, the more every single year, it feels more. Now the that coach is right. It does help build culture. It does help build momentum. You don't want to go on a three-game losing skid. You don't want to end the season nine and five. He, he's right about that. He's right about that. However, if a kid's hurt, you're not going to go and, and throw him out there like you would in the regular season, or you would throw him in the SEC championship game. I'm surprised that Jay Ward's playing, and it does help build that culture. It does help Jay Ward establish what he's leaving, right? All right, let's get to a couple comments, and then we'll get to some more of the stuff in the show. JTN says, okay, BP, Brian Polian, stays in the program and leads recruiting. Do you think a replacement should be made at special teams coordinator? Please don't dodge. If, if he's not... If Brian Polian is not your special teams coordinator, you're not going to keep an on-field staff guy for just recruiting. You're just you're you're just not. So maybe what you can do is go out there and hire a really good analyst. You know, there's a maybe a former guy that um LSU maybe once had it sitting on his couch. I wonder if he would come and get paid 450k a year to be an analyst and only work three days a week. Just a theory. I pay Greg McMahon 450,000 dollars a year to work three times a week. Let's do special teams three times a week. Let's do it Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Our Monday, our Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, whatever he wants to do, and pay him four hundred fifty k, and then help Brian Polian out on special teams, help him identify people that can kick and return and shit like that. 
right? Laura Efferson on YouTube says, if Daniel stays, what kind of growth can we expect? Well, this is what I expect from Jaden. Um, he's got to build confidence. Does he need some work with his footwork? Yep. He does. He does. D does he need to throw the ball down the field more at times? Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. Is he a, a, a pretty good quarterback? Yeah, he is. But he's got he's got to get better in some areas. Um, and I think a, a, a an off season with Brian Kelly and Joe Sloan will, will, would would really help him out. I, I here's here's how I feel about it right now. I could like I feel very confident if you get of a whole nother off season to Jane Daniels or Brian Kelly, shit could get real. And and not not just Jane Daniels, like let's like Walker Howard, Garrett Nussmeyer. Like, look how Garrett Nussmeyer's kind of already improved some. Right? So with that being said, I, I mean He's got to get the ball down the field, Laura. He's got to get the ball down the field. There's no doubt about that. No doubt about that. Uh, John Bellin says, what about Mike Jones? Who? Uh, I think Mike Jones would want to leave. I mean, he's been in college football a long time, but can he come back? Yes. Uh, Chili on... Uh, Chili on YouTube since 199 via Super Chat. Thank you, Chili. He says, do you do you really expect Daniels to improve his passing? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Guys, let me look. So let me let me say this. Okay, because they're like, I don't want to compare because it's not fair to Jaden. And I've said this before, but so let me break it down in more detail. It's not fair for anybody can, to compare Jane Daniels and Joe Burrow, okay? But I, I double-dog dare you to go look at the stats, like game stats, of Joe Burrow in 2018. Guys, Joe Burrow was ass at times. Pooh, can we do this? If we can, can we pull up games like Auburn, Florida, Miami, and Alabama in 2018. Let me say that again. Auburn, Florida, Miami, and Alabama. Can we pull those couple games up? I want to show y'all something. Guys, Joe's, Joe was ass. <laughs> Did he get better? Yeah, Joe got better. But somebody's going to clip this and say, hey, well, Blake's saying Joe Burrow was ass. That's not what I'm fully saying. Joe had some games that he was really bad in really, really bad in. And I think that he would agree with that. Now, let this slander and let the comments fly. Let the comments fly. Now, here's another thing to that. Okay? Um, the other thing with that is, is Joe didn't have enough time. Okay? Joe did not have enough time with his receivers. He didn't have enough time with his coordinators. He didn't have enough time with his head coach. He didn't have enough time with you know like he i'll never forget him and jamar chase um him and jamar chase were talking about like they didn't even know each other's names real well like they didn't even know what they were doing now you can make the argument that joe never started a game and that's fine and that's true that is really true but all kids what i'm trying to get at is all players are not created equal like we want to make comparisons so much so much that it, 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 it's ridiculous. Now, corn dog, cornhole, the the coon ass corn dog, the the Rudy Poo that he is says something. But let's look at this. All right. So Miami, he was a oh, just like like look at this man. All right. So Joe in eighteen was eleven of 24, 10 of twenty, fifteen of. Th so I'm just going in games in order. So Miami, Southeastern, Auburn, Tech, Mississippi, Florida, Georgia. Uh, Mississippi State, Alabama. Let's do those games, okay? He goes 11 of 24. Then he goes 10 of 20. I mean, y'all see this? Now, if you're listening to us on the radio, it really sucks. But, I mean, he has one, two, three, 
four, five, five games that he's at 50% below her. One, two, three, four. No, four. One, two, three, four. 50% 50% below her. And, and, and so, I mean, there were times that he struggled. Like, look at Florida, 19 of 34, 192 yards, two interceptions. Played 75 plays. Go up to Miami, his first game, which you can't really compare that. But, I, I mean, it's tough to compare that. But I'm just trying. And, and none of this is paralleled. Like, none of this is paralleled. Okay? So, it, it, it's tough to even compare Joe in his first season to Jane Daniels because Jane Daniels was much more advanced at this exact moment than he was, right? So it's not fair to Joe, and obviously Joe got a thousand times better. My point that I'm trying to make is, the point that I'm trying to make is, is that we've seen quarterbacks in this program have very, very shitty games and got and getting better. Do you mean to tell me it took Joe Burrow five years to get where he was at? He never started a game three years into it. Now, I I mean, and not, no, Pooh, we don't have to, but like last year, Jane Daniels had 10 picks, 10 interceptions. Got better this year. Let's see what he can do with another year. It's all I'm trying to get at. All I'm trying to get at. The the coon ass, the the dumb dog says, but it's the truth. As it, uh, the corn dog, what I say, the dumb dog. <laughs> My bad. My bad. He says, but it's the truth, as it is the truth, that he wasn't that good in 18. No, he, he, right. I mean, it, and it's not comparable. Like, and I want to make that really well known. Like, I want to make that very well known. I'm just giving a parallel. Do I think that Jane can get better? Yeah. Yeah, I think he can. And I think that he will. I think that he will. Kristen Connor says, then good old Joe developed into literally every man's man crush. Yeah, I would. I'm not going to say anything because I, I can't. I, uh, Dane Bergeron says, how do you improve JD's vision? Well, I think number one, to improve his vision, you got to improve his confidence. Because sometimes when you're seeing ghosts, you're seeing things you're not supposed to see. Confidence gets that out of there and confidence to make the throw. Uh, he does not seem to be able to find the open receiver. I don't believe, I don't, I don't agree with that. So Dane, I think that there's a difference in finding the open receiver and not throwing to him. Uh, he says he has had them running wide open. He's also had times where they haven't been. So, I mean, look, He's got to do things better. I don't think anybody can make that argument. Like, I don't think anybody can make that argument. I, I'm not reading all this. But he says, Nuss is a, you know, daddy's a D, uh, o, OC, got a cannon for an arm. He has no game time experience on the field. Enough, Nuss is 50 times better at throwing the ball. See, here's a problem. And is your dog at the LSU football game? Creek, Creek D. Wheeler? Wheeler? What you got a Yorkie at a game for? there's a difference in being flashy, meaning like, and we've said this a thousand times, but just to rehash it out, there's a difference in being flashy, Nussmeyer, and and, and creating turnovers for yourself. Like we, so, you know, it's a different play, but the throw to Malik neighbors that goes into the end zone, everybody's like, oh, it's a great throw. Guys, he threw it into double coverage. He did it again later in the game. It got picked. Now, Kayshawn's, Kayshawn's interception was a slot fade to the pylon. Georgia got better after they saw Nussmeyer. They literally made him force two turnovers after they saw three series of him. Think, so you don't think about that, though, do you? After Garrett Nussmeyer had th- actually four um series because I think they had four I think they had six total in the second half after they saw him four times he had two turnovers back to back so once they had seen those Meyer a little bit they he he didn't score again and one of those series that LSU scored on jo, uh, Josh Williams had a massive run and Noah Kane's the one that led you to the touchdown because they ran 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 and got one in so Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, just in case everybody missed it, look, Jay, we talked about Jay Ward. We talked about Radarius Jones. Um, I want to get this um, out really quickly before we get to the rest of y'all's comments. The staff has hit the road today in recruiting or yesterday in recruiting. <sighs> Man, I, I would just be – I would be shocked. And when I mean shocked, I, I'm talking about sh totally shocked if LSU doesn't get some big-time DBs in here. Pooh, like let, – let, Pooh remembers when I came in here after LSU beat Bama and how it was shaking. And No, you weren't here because <laughs> I had to do this shit by myself. Thanks. Oh, Blake, I got to go to my anniversary. Ooh. I was, I some, I, maybe it wasn't your anniversary. I don't know what Pooh hair. I was like, at this anniversary. <laughs> 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 or maybe he was here. I don't remember what game he was or wasn't here. He, oh, yeah, that's right. He was at the game. Sir Pooh who storms fields. That's right. That's right. So... <laughs> I just will say this, and I think all of you should subscribe to the forum. There's like so on the on the radio and live active listeners. There's 350 here, but another 200 of you actively just listening. Let me just say this, okay? I think LSU sits in a really good spot for some of these defensive backs, some of the and all the guys that they have. You know, like Javian Taviano tonight posted. And, guys, some of this, like, I'm not basing it off of this, okay? Like, not even remotely close basing it off of this. Um, But, like, I go and look at JV and Taviano, and the only in-home visit that he posts that he's had so far is with Brian Kelly. So, like, if, if he's going to Texas, if he's going to Texas A&M, why didn't he ever post any of it to social media? Like there's things that you see that makes you that makes things trend. Okay. That's that gives you a lot of confidence because words don't really mean a whole hell of a lot some a lot of times. Actions do. Actions do. Man, LSU's about to have a really damn good fucking class, dude. Really good recruiting class. And going into the portal. She She. She. Uh, Pooh says this is also wide receivers first year in the system. This is LSU's third offensive coordinator in three years. That's true. Y'all saw Joe Brady again. Y'all saw Joe Brady again. Saying uh, he ain't coming back to college. <laughs> uh. uh Corn, uh, corn dog, corn dog. Why don't you just make put your real name on here? He says, "Can Jane get beat out in the spring?" Yeah, he can get beat out in the spring. I mean, anybody can beat him out. I mean, Walker Howard can beat him out. I fully believe that. Willie, I don't know. hey, Pooh, what's the guy from Jackson State? The guy that um, he's on Jackson State Radio. He does a thing with uh, Dion. Every time he's Dion says something foolish, he goes. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's funny. <laughs> Dion pulled that shit on him today, though. That was funny. <laughs> Dion said, "You taking both? You you taking Shador? You leaving? You, can you leave Shador with you?" He goes, "Yeah." <laughs> it's funny, and it was funny about that too. Pooh, go listen to it before your show tonight. Who and Pooh and them are doing the HBCU hour. Dion said, "I'm taking both of my sons in that interview." It was really interesting. It was really, in, it's at the very end. He said, do you, he said, and I'm quoting, he said, do you really think I would leave here without both of my sons? And I was like, oh shit. Like, is this all just fake? You know, like, is this all just made up? Go listen to that third video at the end. It's kind of, it's kind of crazy. Kind of crazy. Jamie Brady says, what about Nicholas Harbor? I don't really have a good, good gauge on him. I, I really don't. I really, really don't. I, I don't feel good about that one. I don't feel good about that one. Now, I, look, I can be wrong. You know, like, I can be wrong. Um, but I haven't heard a lot about him, and, and he's been kind of distant, it feels like, than the others. He's been distant than the others. But, man, that guy's a freak. And, and look, LSU, so, I, I mean, if, if he's going to play tight end, LSU just offered another tight end out of Cincinnati. So, and I, I you know, go and 
you'll see on the forum what I mean. So if the kid's going to play tight end, mm, mm. Uh, Creek Joe says, so will Jane, so when Jane is at the combine and the NFL scouts say, man, he am arm, can he throw? No, not really. Can you, Creek Dweller, I've never seen you comment on the show, but can you, can you clean that up in an English, please? Uh, Aaron Miller says Brady doesn't want to recruit. Hell no, he don't want to recruit. That mother Hubbard don't want to recruit for, you know. Y'all remember the meme that said F them kids? That's Joe Brady in a nutshell. (laughs) F them kids. F them kids. So, Pooh, I just saw this. We just got sent this uh, by Jamie Thornhill. Uh, Dylan Johnson, the running back at... Um, Mississippi State just went to the portal, and you know how these guys can poo. Can you can you bring that up? I'll send I'll send it to you. Hold on, I'll send it to you. Uh, I want to bring this up because this is kind of this is kind of nuts. So, poo, I just I just sent it in the I I just sent it in the AYS group. If we can bring if we can bring that up right quick, this dude just took a massive shot at uh Mike Leach, and then you got Brandon Walker down there saying, "Please don't, please don't." Well, he took a shot at his school. This is gonna be fun. This is gonna be fun to uh to see. Hold on, I think I might be able to pull it up right quick. Uh share screen. Let me see if I got this. All right, here it is. So maybe I should just let Pooh do it. Pooh, if you can get to it, because I don't know how to advance this thing. So this young man, Dylan Johnson literally just came out and said that he's transferring and going to the portal. Did you see the last sentence um, or a couple of the sentences that he has here? Pooh, let me know when you, when you, if you got it, but go check this out. If it, when you, when you can, he says in here, it has been an honor in, uh, to participate in this program with you all together. You guys have helped me build my character and skills tremendously with that being said, since I am not a very tough guy and Leach is glad that I am leaving, I am entering my name into the transfer portal. <laughs> Pooh, let me know if you can advance your or, or scoot yours in right quick. All right. Because, I I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty wild. This kid just took a massive shot at Mike Leach, like across the bow. With that being said, with that being said, and since I'm not a tough guy and Mike Leach doesn't want me here, I'm leaving. <laughs> oh, God. It's so great. It's so great. Anyway, yeah, there it is right there. With that being said, since I'm not a very tough guy and Mike Leach is glad that I'm leaving, I'll be entering my name into the transfer portal with hopes of finding a more fitting playing environment for me. Thank you. (laughs) Oh, God. What's so great about this, what's so great about this is now shit's out in the open. Now shit's out in the open. Hey, you don't want him on the team? He just called you out for it. It's great, man. That's so great. That's so great. Uh, Bojack says, I thought Drake May was going to Bama. Thought he would. I thought he might too. But he said, you know, Jordan dropped that bag. Uh, Tyler Man says Brandon Walker is a straight clown. I agree with that. I agree with that. Christopher says on YouTube, what former transfers out of LSU we welcome back the coldest? The coldest was never in here. So how do I want to – listen, I don't think the coldest Crawford's getting an LSU offer, okay? Um, I'll leave it at that. But I saw that he got one from Washington State today. That's a, the coldest-ass place. The coldest-ass place. A uh, Creek Dweller from the earlier comment says he can run. Creek Dweller, he can throw. I mean, he, he, he guys, Jane Daniels has over 3,500 total combined yards. He's got 700 rushing yards. What do you think? What do you, what do you mean he can't throw? He, he can throw. He's got to get better at taking shots and working on footwork to be more accurate. 
you, 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 and, and then y'all will make the defense of Nussmeyer having two interceptions in the sec- or two turnovers in the second half. Well, Blake, because he throws the damn ball, that's what quarterbacks are supposed to look like. No, quarterbacks aren't supposed to turn the ball over. I mean, shit. Lucy B says, hey, Blake, Crane and Co. Yeah, I, my buddy. Look, me and David are pretty close. Well, me, really, all of them, I talk to him, uh, you know, but I talk to David, you know. Uh, shout out to our good buddy, David. He's having a second baby, man. Uh, says Crane and Company, they gave you a shout out this morning talking about Caleb Williams' nails. Yeah, they told me. <laughs> Pooh, it, it went viral again. Did you did you see what happened on Instagram? They called me a, 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 a one guy uh, put it on Instagram and said, I'm a um, I'm a soft liberal fuck, is what he called me. A soft liberal fuck. <laughs> I don't know. I, that shit's funny to me. <laughs> and then one dude in the comments says, yeah, I went and, go, went and watched one of his shows. His beard, he, he talk, you know, everybody, everybody takes the beard, boo. God. God. A soft liberal fuck. I never even knew that I was political like that. You can't paint your nails fuck Utah and get beat and think that, you know, there's not repercussions. We talked about that last night. Christopher um, said, yeah, uh, he was previously committed. Yeah, he, you know, I, I just don't, I don't think that they'll do that, buddy. Uh, Mikey says Ruben Owens, uh, the second, uh, the second just got decommitted from Louisville, played high school ball with Harold Blake. No, I, I think he goes to A and M. Yeah, I think he goes to A and M. He ain't coming here. <laughs> at least, at least he's shown on it no interest. At least he's shown no interest. Kevin says the running back room, Emory, Guywin, Holly, Jackson, and hopefully Williams come back. Yeah, and if you got that, who knows? They might add one. They might add one. Jesse Jackson says, add Blake, whom do you uh, consider being our punt returner, kick returner next season? I don't think he's on the team yet, but he's coming. He's coming. Arlen Blackwell says Daniels was the better fit uh, for QB this year. Nuss has improved a lot throughout the season. I agree. He's improved a lot, but he's not ready yet. Like, you got to give him more time, guys. I mean, nobody – like, when I tell you when – it's you know what I feel like? It's sometimes I feel like – like, I uh-oh. I, like, I tell you something, and it's something that you don't want to hear. I, I feel like I'm the dad and you're the kid. I tell you something, and you're like, but I want I want candy. I want it, I want it, I want it. And when you when you don't get it, when your ass don't when you don't get it, you you freak out. You gotta get better, but you got I don't I don't think any of you in here understand how crucial it is to turn the football over. Do you remember Jameis Winston? Do you remember Jameis Winston the year that he threw 30 touchdowns and 30 picks? Pooh, what year was that that he played? You know? What was the year that Jameis threw 30 and 30? What was the Bucs record? You can't turn the football over and win football games, guys. It is better to be conservative to win you football games than to turn the football over god it's like some of you've never played before maybe some of you haven't oh chad Shelfo says blake from one italian to another i don't soft liberal fuck softly <laughs> uh i guess man i guess i guess uh, Tony says Owens and Harold didn't play together. Were where are you people are from? Where are you people from? Yeah, yeah. 
Taylor Bell says Daniel's running threat amplifies as a young O lineman getting more and more game reps too. It's a good point. It's a really, really good point. Really, really good point. And he's wrong. He's right there. Can he get better? Um, uh, can he get better throwing the ball down the field? That that's the only thing. That's the only thing. All right, a couple more. We'll get on out of here. Before we do, though, uh, I do need to talk about my good friends over at Synergy Resources. Synergy, R-E-S-L-L-L-C dot net. Uh, that Synergy Resources, R-E-S-L-L-C dot net. Give my buddy Tully a phone call today. Put, uh, hoses, pipes, finnings, they do it all. Let them know that Blake sent you on by. And then let me talk about my good friend Drew over at Wham Electric. Licensed electrical contractor. Guys, generators, in-home, got literally everything that you need inside your home. I got a generator here at my house. There's no better peace of mind. I'm talking about like the Generac that's outside. There is no better peace of mind that you can have for your family than being able when something goes wrong that you have a generator, you have a Generac ready to go. If you're in the North Shore, you're in Baton Rouge, call Wham Electric today for any residential need that you have 985-241-8059 that's 985-241-8059 let them know that Blake sent you on by okay a couple more and then we'll get rolling out of here Lee says any idea of who we offers to from out of the portal well Lee you're gonna have to you're gonna have to go to the forum uh Pooh Bear Brings it up, says Tampa Bay Bucks 2019 were seven and nine. Jameis threw 33 touchdowns and 30 interceptions. 5,100, 5,109 passing yards. See what I mean? That man threw for 5,100 yards and they went seven and nine and missed the playoffs. Doesn't matter who it is, man. Doesn't matter who it is. Doesn't matter who it is. Shit. All right. We're going to cut this one a little bit short tonight. Until tomorrow, Pooh Bear, I'm going to bring you up. We're going to bring you up. Bring you up. Uh, Y'all show tonight at 8.30? 8.15. 8.15. HBCU hour. I guess you're talking a lot about Dion tonight, I'm assuming. Yeah. Yeah, we've got got some Jackson State uh, guys coming on. Uh, Well, we've got a Jackson State guy coming on. Uh, We've got... um, uh, actually, we've got like three guests uh, that I'll be on kind of talking about the whole uh, Dion thing, what it means, you know, fallout. So, yeah. All right. Well, I got to admit, I, before we get out of here, we're literally 30 seconds into this. I'm happy for Dion, man. I like yeah. in the sense, in the sense of like, who it's not every day. And, and Dion talked about this and not to get political. It's not every day a, pa- a black a black man gets a power five head coaching job. Oh, it's not. It's not. And, so, and I and I said it um in my altar call. Uh, four of Colorado's last five have been African American head coaches. So and listen, Boulder, listen. It's cold as a son of a bitch. Yeah. It's colder than a witch's titty, brother. It's beautiful up there, and he go their facilities. It, 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 it's a sleeping giant. It yeah. is a sleeping giant. I'm telling you. Yeah, I wish, I wish him, I wish him the best. I wish him the best, but he's gonna do the, good. He's gonna I, do I don't good. think the, but you know, tune in. The problem wasn't Nell that Tucker he took didn't the job. Have the portal. If no, Nell no, no. had the portal at Colorado, he'd still be at Colorado. I fully believe that. Yeah, but again, the problem wasn't that he took the job. It's That's how he left. That's how he left. So, well, it's not about the new girl that you got all times. It's sometimes how you leave the old girl that makes everybody think about you in a different way. Yeah, so. there you go. I never cheated on a woman. I've only I've only had one woman in my entire life. That's my my wife, Megan. All right, right here, peace. <laughs>